Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about changing unavailable relationship patterns, healing unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first you and then others. Every episode, we will talk about actionable advice that you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow your self-worth. I'm Sheena Tubbs. Let's begin. Hello, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Um, This episode is being posted at the beginning of July, at the beginning of the second half of 2019. And so I thought it would be fitting to have an episode that would help us kind of reset where we are. And so you have probably a plethora of podcasts if you are an avid podcast listener like I am um, about setting your goals, about becoming refreshed, about um, getting clear on your purpose. And that's not what this podcast is going to be about. It is going to be about, what can you guess? Relationships. Yay. (laughs) And you might have guessed that just from the title itself. But we believe here that healing Um, definitely starts internally and the manifestation of that is externally. And so this episode is going to be about the external manifestation of healing, which is healthy relationships. Once we're good on the inside, our relationships will match on the outside. And so today's podcast episode is titled three ways to know when it's time to end a relationship. So this is going to be our reset. This is going to be our time to just take a moment to take a quick inventory um, before we get really deep into our summer, into our summer loving, um, to see are the relationships that I have around me those that are going to benefit me? Or am I going to be tempted to just stay stuck in the same patterns? And what can I do about it? You know, when I talk to other people about making the relationship changes, it's, it's interesting what people say because there's almost never a good time to in relationships or to make changes or to have these these really serious talks with people because it's not always that you have to end a relationship it's just that you have to change the dynamics which means that you have to use your voice you can't be needless and wantless which is what often happens in those relationships where one of us has an intimacy disorder you know those of us who struggle with anxious attachment or um, love addiction or whatever you may call it Uh, We will struggle with just going along with what the person wants and trying to be who he or she wants us to be and adapting and adjusting and trying to fix and trying to chase. And uh, those of us who are avoidant, we will just try to push the problems on the other person. We may say that um, it's their responsibility while we are coping and doing our own thing. Um, But when I to go back to there not being a good time, to talk about relationships. I mean, in the summer, this is a time that I hear from folks that, well, you know, the summer I've always had someone next to me and this is where I'm supposed to be having fun. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of be loose and be free now. And then in the fall, I'm going to get serious. But then in the fall, that's when cuffing season starts. So that's when people are starting to try to get comfortable. They're starting to kind of look around to see who who's nearby and then the winter, that's when um, all our family stuff comes up. And so you're probably not going to be wanting to make some deep relational changes then. And then in the spring, you know, is new you, new me. Um, And this is where we all try to start with our boundaries, which would be a good time. However, people kind of use that time to kind of get the nerve up or they try to focus on themselves instead of setting clear adjustments and boundaries and limits in their relationships. And so it's kind of this vicious cycle um, that never really ends. And so even though I am making this episode on July 2nd, 2019, to prepare you for the second half of the year, no matter when you are listening to this episode, it is divine timing. If you saw the title of this episode and you're like, oh, that looks interesting, girl, This was for you, whether this is October 2nd, you're hearing this, December 31st, or January 13th, this is for you. So just take stock, okay? Now the thing about relationship advice is, for the most part, I would say that a lot of the good advice are things that we've heard before, right? So you may hear some things here that may be brand new, 
And you may hear some things that are not brand new, but you're hearing them again because you need to hear them again. Um, and that's okay. So um, I want to invite you to have an open mind and an open heart as we talk about this. Also, as a disclaimer, I currently have a sleeping baby on my chest. And so if he grunts or moves, I'm not going to edit this episode because I want to make sure it goes out today. Um, so just letting you know, in case you hear kind of an amen from the baby choir, um, he really wants you to change your relationships and get better this year as well. All right, my dear. So you are in a season where you are wanting to work on yourself and get your own inner healing. And it's important for you to have healthy relationships because they will lead you astray. They will become a replacement for your own self-worth. Um, they will become an a, a anchor where you're trying to make changes and it may be a struggle to make those changes because of codependency, because of feeling obligated, because you are parentified in case these are um, not romantic relationships that you may have in mind. Um, maybe it's a familiar relationships where you were told that you were in charge of the person, um, whether or not it's a parent who maybe had an addiction or a mental disorder or a sibling or a cousin or um, a god, godchild, whoever it may be, whatever relationship sticks out in your mind, um, I just want you to be aware of it. Just know that that is usually, not always, but usually a mirror of what is going on inside of you because of what you are attracting and or allowing to stay in your life. So maybe it's not that, um, maybe you're crystal clear that this is not what you want and maybe this is, you're crystal clear on what your expectations and your boundaries are, but you're not setting it with them. And so we teach people how to treat us. We hear that phrase and that cliche all of the time because it's true. So by you not acting on what you feel to be true for you, by you not speaking up for yourself, by you just letting time go by and choosing to have the conversation later, the problems will keep going on. It doesn't go away, it doesn't get better. People don't magically change or grow up overnight. And you bring you and your fear of conflict, your fear of rejection, your fear of abandonment, because that's really what it is. We don't have conversations and boundary talks with people because we're afraid of being alone. We're afraid of the pain that may come up on the other side. We're afraid that it may mean that we are being too demanding or we're too much or we're being mean or we're bad or whatever unhealthy messaging was taught to us growing up, all that stuff comes into play. Um, and so not only do we have an unhealthy relationship, we have a reinforcement that there's something wrong with us because we have these feelings that we don't think that we should. We think we should be grateful. We think that we should be a little bit open-minded. We should be more patient with the people in our lives. But girl, no, 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 no. Nine times out of 10, we are talking about an adult. Um, and whatever adult is in your life, he or she is in charge of himself and his or her own emotional exchange. And even when we're talking about a child, you are still in charge of your own emotional space and bubble. And so children um, or teenagers or whoever it may be, um, do not make you react a certain way. You make yourself react a certain way. And so keep that in mind. I had someone else who was talking to me about how she was carpooling with um, some kids in her car that went to school with her kids and how one of the kids in this carpool was a little terror and um, just completely just messed up the atmosphere of the car, would start picking on the other kids and just like, just be really disruptive. And I was like, "Who you set the tone for your own emotional environment. I said this to um, the woman that I was working with. You know, she might be eight years old um, and you might not want to be mean, but you can still set a boundary. And so it might look differently. You might not be like wanting to snatch her up because that's not your child and we don't need two parents trying to lay hands on each other, but you can talk to her in a child appropriate way and say, so these are the rules of the car. This is what we do and this is what we don't do. And those who do this, this is what they receive as a reward. Those who don't do this, these are the consequences, right? It's still you showing up for yourself instead of just letting this person take over all of your emotional space for 45 minutes um, of a car ride. 
So with that, let me finally jump into the three ways to know when it's time to end a relationship. The first way is if it's abusive in any way, okay? This is kind of a gimme, but I think it needs to be said. If you have a relationship that is emotionally abusive, physically abusive, mentally, verbally, spiritually, sexually abusive, perpetually, not only is there no remorse, there's no repentance. I'm using repentance in the definition of that not only do they say they're sorry, that they turn away, that they change their behavior as well. Because we have lots of people who will be abusive and maybe even own up to the fact that they said or did something that was abusive, but they don't change. Or they try to blame it on you. Okay? So if that is the nature of your relationship. And you have seen that over time this person has not changed and it has not gotten better. It is time for you to end this relationship. Your bargaining and you being set in this kind of fantasy of who you think this person can or should be is keeping you stuck and time is passing and you're going to look back if you haven't already and said, I'll wait this time. It's time for me to make this change. And then um, years will continue to pass. Okay. So I want you to know that abuse of any kind is not to be tolerated. Okay. That was a quick one. The second one let's talk about is what I've talked about before with the addiction avoidant pattern. So those who are love addicts, quote unquote, who are attracted to love avoidance, quote unquote, um, but those who are involved in this push pull dynamic. So the more one partner tries to move forward and change and engage in the relationship and fix it and make it better, the more the other partner moves away and then with the partner who was trying to change things and make it better and was like very like invested the other the second partner might call it clingy or needy or just doing too much when the first partner stops that then the second partner who's the avoidant will re-engage and will maybe apologize or maybe they might say okay this is what i was looking for um, I just needed that space or they may come back out of fear because they may or may not want to admit that they have their own abandonment issues going on, um, even though they're afraid to get close to people. And so they re-engage the person who is the love addict or the one who's anxiously attached. And then when that person comes back, then the avoidant moves away again. So no matter where you are, you're in this seesaw where y'all are never on the same page, where the one, more one person wants it, the more the other person moves away um, and vice versa, where there is a clear kind of power dynamic and game where you're trying to or they're trying to figure out who has some more control in this relationship. And, you know, I, I don't have time in this episode to kind of go into like all the reasons why one person may need to feel like they are in control the ways that you might not even know that you're trying to be in control because you may feel like this thing is being done to you and it's very unfair um so you're kind of like stuck in this kind of victim mentality in this relationship um kind of like i talked about in the previous episode but this dynamic doesn't get better at the end of the day because we have two wounded people, two people with intimacy disorders who do not know how to show up for themselves and be close to the other person. Either you have to pick or choose one or the other. Um, and there's a lot of fear whenever you are actually close, fear of rejection, abandonment, being judged, um, of it not working out, of losing this really great thing. There's so many reasons why intimacy disorders exist. And so, if you have two people who are working through this, working through their own attachment wounds and unhealthy attachment styles, and well, I said working through them, but what I mean is if you have two people who have these two attachment styles and they're not actively working on it, then the relationship will continue to struggle. So a question I would get often is if, I, as a love addict, am in a relationship with someone who's a love avoidant, and I'm working on myself, 
could the relationship make it? And, you know, yeah, it, it possibly could. However, here's what I'll say to that. What it working out may mean may look very different. <laughs> Sorry, the baby is snoring and I'm kind of distracted. Um, I apologize if you hear the snores. Um, so you as a person who's doing this work, you will start to get a lot of revelations. You will start to get a lot of, of ahas. You will undoubtedly get healthier, which means that you will change. And so, or more of you will become more apparent and stronger in this relationship. You'll start to regain your voice and that will change the dynamic of the relationship. If you are involved with an avoidant who um, typically has more power in the relationship because they kind of stay away and they kind of make you kind of work for it for a little bit or they have things outside of you that um, are more interesting to them, um, then or that they tell you or they make it seem like is more interesting than you. Um, and you start to come into your own and you start to say, hey, I don't like this. And it's not just kind of you like doing these kind of empty threats or um, these um, these kind of like emotional like pleas, but it's actually like there are real consequences. And I'm, not only am I going to leave, but I'm actually not going to come back. Um, the person that you are with is going to have a choice. Either they are going to change or they are going to stay. Um, and you, as someone who's a love addict, you might have this fantasy that they are going to be so enamored and so, uh, so heartbroken that they're going to be forced to change. But let me tell you something very clearly. You also as someone who may struggle with anxious attachment or even fearful avoidant attachment, um, dismissive attachment, whatever it might be, you know how painful it is whenever people try to either get close to you or reject you. And hopefully you know that it's not really about the person whenever these, these events happen. So, the pain goes deeper is another way for me to say it. And just this, this situation is just one more situation on top of a history of other events. And so this is my longer way of saying that if you are in a relationship and you give an ultimatum to a partner who has a certain attachment style and you're like, this needs to change or else, and they choose not to change, that is because they have their own healing work and history that they have to deal with. It really has nothing to do with you and whether or not you're worthy or you're good enough or you're lovable. It is because they have their own things that makes them feel not worthy, not good enough and unlovable. And by you staying there, after you have this conversation and see that they may not be willing to change, you're actually crippling them from moving forward, okay? That's the scenario that for this to work out that you will, um, that you're getting better and you're working on your stuff. The other scenario is that you're getting better and working on your stuff and you have all this awareness. You give this ultimatum to your avoidant partner and your avoidant partner says no. And instead of you following through with what you know to be true and you know what you want, you shrink back. You take it all back and you start to compromise and you try to kind of like go if and well and but and, and make these changes um, to, re to regress back to who you were before. And so the way that this relationship works is by you stopping your work, is by you learning to compartmentalize who you are and what you want in this little box. And so if that is something that you choose because everything that we do is a choice, Again, back to the victim mentality. If you choose to move forward, then that is something that you have picked. If you choose to not move forward, it's not something that he or she has done to you or made you choose. You are a grown woman and you chose that you would rather have this relationship versus show up for yourself. And I say that strongly, but I don't say that with any judgment because I know how painful that is. 
I know that that deep, heart-wrenching, um, gut-tormenting pain when you're talking to the person that you think and you feel and you just kind of feel like you know is supposed to be your soulmate and you're at risk of losing them. And there's, there's this need to feel like, well, I'll give everything to keep them here. I understand that. And at the same time, I'm telling you with the same love and compassion and, and non-judgment and warmth that you doing that is not going to make this relationship better. It's actually going to keep it going. It's going to make you more resentful. It's going to make you depressed. If you have children or if you have children in the future, they are going to see these patterns. They are going to repeat it. When I first start working with clients, whether or not it's therapy in real life where like walking through your traumas or I'm your coach and we have specific goals and we're going to get you um, to this place to detox to healing to dating and you know like is, is more focused no matter who it is we do a family tree and we look at where these relationship patterns come from and it is clear as day where it is like sometimes I can even like just kind of guess um this parent is did this and this parent has that and then lo and behold that's what shows up on paper because these wounds and these traumas are generational and so if you do not want your children to have the same type of relationships that you have had then you need to make the changes as well for yourself and hopefully that's just an extra encouragement because you working on yourself, you'll get to a place to where you know that you are worth making the changes all for you. You don't need to make it for other people, but that's just another incentive. So let me be clear before I go to the last point um, for my avoidance sisters. Well, actually, before I say that, let me say this. So a couple of weeks ago, I put out a survey to um, the Black Girls Heal community and I was like, what do y'all want to learn about in the second half of 2019? I wanna make sure that I'm putting out like the right stuff. And one person wrote in and they said that they identify as a love avoidant. And while they love black girls heal, they feel like they would want more support for um, those of us who struggle with our walls and letting people in. Because when you Google and research help for avoidance, Either nothing is there, or if it is there, it's about narcissism. And it's about, and even then, like, I'm filling in some, some points right now, but, because um, I didn't say this part, but what I've noticed is when it is about narcissism and avoidance, is helping those of us who are, have been in a relationship with narcissists cope with their avoidance and cope with their abuse. And so women who legitimately want to work on your walls and work on your trust issues and work on getting close to people and getting out of yourself, you don't really have anywhere to start, right? If I'm right, I want you to say amen in the car. I want you to say hell yeah in the car. I want you to like tell me on Instagram, but I want, I want you to verbally affirm that that's you somehow. So with that said, let me be clear that in this first point, when I was saying if it's abuse to end the relationship. Um, I guess I don't want anyone here to think that an avoidant is an abuser. Now, an avoidant, just like a love addict or an anxiously attached person can do and possibly will do actions that are abusive, right? So like the isolating, the exclusion, the um, insults that happen because for an avoidant to keep you away, we become very critical and we become very judgmental and we have a very short um, patience um, tolerance for whatever we think is annoying or um, unsatisfying. Um, we are very clear about that. Um, and someone who is anxiously attached or who is um, a love addict does cross boundaries. They can and do become very intrusive. They can and do become very accusatory and, um, 
and require things that are not healthy to require to someone else. They um, do become very codependent and it is um, heavy. It is a drain um, for any person. That's why typically people who are healthy and securely attached, when they meet someone who is a love addict or love avoidant or anxiously attached or fearfully avoidant or dismissively avoidant, they see these people and they're like, I don't like how this relationship is going and they dip out and they dip out because the way that we try to attach is not, it's not cool. But all that to say, my avoidant sisters, I see you, I hear you. And the way that you would know for this second point for you, that it's time to end this relationship because you're already very good at leaving. You're already very good at coming up with the reasons why um, this relationship is not going to work or, you know, you just be settling or um, maybe they are a really great person, but like you find yourself becoming very like um, occupied or busy with something else and it just slowly fades away. Like we're very good at that, right? Um, but the way that you would know that it's time to end the relationship is that... You've talked about this with trusted others, hopefully a coach or a counselor, and they have given you the cosign that it's time to end this relationship. I am saying this because again, us as avoidance, we are very smart. We are very quick. We are very intelligent. We can break down all of our reasons and rationales why in a very logical way. So good that we can convince ourselves when really we're just doing the same distancing patterns that we have always done. And we only have our own perspective to judge ourselves against. And so because we are so good at being in our head in a way that seems very functional and seems very um, healthy and methodic, um, seems like there's a method behind it, um, we need someone with more wisdom, someone who is very clear, someone who, um, will say, yeah, that's a legitimate reason to want to end this relationship with them. Or no, you're just nitpicking. It's okay that this person you're dating doesn't like Chipotle as much as you do and isn't um, as big of a comic book fan as you are because y'all agree on your values and you have fun together and you, um, you have the same um, desires and goals in life so yeah, move forward. And that's an actual example from one of my, one of my really good girlfriends who was dating this guy who literally was like, you don't like the Avengers as much as I do. And, <laughs> and I'm laughing, but that's kind of the stuff that we do. Like we have this image and I'll use the global we, it's not just avoidance, but I think the, the global we, we have this image that the person that we are going to end up with is going to be our everything. Even those of us who know better, that's still what we have in our mind. Um, that they are gonna like all the things that we're gonna like and every moment is going to be super like happy or passionate or joyful or intense. And y'all, that's what friendships are for. You, to be healthy, you need to have a full, whole life. Um, that includes your romantic partner, but it also includes your own hobbies, your own friendships, your own purpose, right? Your own self-care routines. And notice that I've only listed five things and four of those things are completely about you and your control and your, your own identity. And so when we try to make other people fit and become us, it is an unhealthy and an unfair standard because they're not supposed to, right? When you are in a relationship with someone, you love and respect them for who they are. Um, you know, you accept that they have big ears and those ears are just gonna stay big, right? Um, and you learn that if the person that you date has big ears, but everything else is, is great, 
then maybe you can live with the big ears. Maybe you're just looking for an escape route because the truth is, is every person you're going to be with, my avoidant sisters, will have a flaw and it's going to be a flaw that's going to really like dig at you. But once you start your healing work, I promise you, this might not be everybody. I'm not telling you that everybody that you date that's annoying, that means you, do, you need to stay with them. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying once you actually like start to do your healing work, you will be able to discern, is this me just trying to get up out this relationship because it's getting too close and it's getting too real? And I need something like legit to like help me escape because I don't want to be here. I don't want to have someone um, see all of me. I don't want to have to share my life and be accountable and have people expect things from me and have to share and lose my power. Hell no. You know, like because <laughs> that's what happens once an avoidant gets close with someone like these are things that come up um but yeah you need someone outside of you to help um to co-sign that what you're thinking is valid for you to end your relationship um and that person or persons cannot be your friends who are also avoidant who also have relationship issues it needs to be someone who knows what he or she is talking about and you trust their wisdom Okay, last point, last way to know if it is time to end a relationship. Sorry, I almost dropped the, dropped the microphone in case my voice got louder right there. Um, is, yeah, are you excited about that? Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, the last one is if you are afraid to be yourself, okay? So this is kind of going back to um, those of us who tend to be more anxiously attached. Um, but yeah, this goes back to that fear of, or that, that tendency to be needless and wantless. So to go along with everything that he or she wants, to kind of lose yourself in this fantasy of what your relationship will be. So say you were very um, targeted and focused on having a certain kind of lifestyle, and then they came along and you were like, well, I think I could, do that lifestyle as well. Um, the reason why I'm saying that this is um, this is a sign that maybe you should end the relationship is because that loss of your own identity, um, you can't sustain it for long. Um, either your real needs will start to seep out the side, um, which will impact the relationship because you'll become very vocal about it or you'll try to get your needs met some other place, or um, it'll cause a lot of resentment to where you drop the perfect um, girlfriend or wife facade. Um, and then also you start to see that, wait a minute, this isn't really fair, um, that I have kind of lost all of me for them. Um, and that realization might happen in the first year. It might not happen 10 years until 10 years later or 20 years later. But whenever and however it happens, it will happen because we are not meant to lose our own identities and selves. Relationships are an extra on top of what we already have. Um, they do not make us any happier or any more whole. Um, and those of you who've done your healing work, those of you who are in relationships, you know that. Now, you may have someone who encourages you to be a better person, who is honest, who challenges you in some really healthy ways, which is awesome. But that's different than requiring that person to parent you and be your counselor and be your God. That's not what we want. OK. Um, and so let me say a couple more words um, about what I mean as well by end the relationship. Now, of course, that could mean breakup. When I'm talking about abuse, I mean breakup. I mean, get up out of there. Don't try to reason. Don't try to bargain. Don't try to like explain when you hit me or when you go through my phone um, and when you said this really humiliating thing in front of my whole family and friends. Like, you probably have 29 of those situations, first off, that you don't have time to go through all of them. Second of all, they probably won't listen to you anyways because they're abusive. 
And third of all, they're not gonna change because they're abusive. So you need to leave. Um, so, so yes, breakup is part of what I mean by ending a relationship. Also, what I really mean um, because I think this is what helps people get the clarity is you need to detox from these relationships. Gosh, if I could like reach virtually through this microphone, through your phone, through your app to hold your shoulders and, and just hold them tightly and just look you deep in your eyes and just kind of shake you a little bit. Um, and for those of you who this is resonating with, who this episode was like, she's talking to me. If I'm talking to you, what you need at the least is to detox from these relationships. And what that means is basically to go on a break. So like Ross and Rachel going on a break. Different than what Ross and Rachel, I'm talking about actual no contact. I'm talking about for, um, I always say 90, but at least 30, but 90 is best. Um, but for 90 days to not look at their social media profiles, to not have any contact or, or phone um, messages, to not just drop off their sweater at their, at their house that they left at yours before you started the no contact because you know that they need it because they're going on this trip, but you're not really going to say anything to them. You're just going to leave it at the doorstep. All of that is contact. That's totally contact. If, if the person that you love or in this relationship with came and dropped off your sweater at your door, you would totally have all these messages about how they're thinking about you and how they love you, and then it's gonna make you miss them, and then you're gonna be wondering if they're gonna text you to tell you thank you. Like, it's all contact. If you are in this unhealthy exchange with someone and everything is so tied up and unclear, you need to have 90 days of not having them in your system at all to get clarity about what you want. And once you have that clarity about what you want and how this relationship is affecting you, then you are clear about making the steps. Also what happens and the reason why detox is the most appropriate word is because this shit is painful. If you detox from someone that you have this unhealthy, trauma-bonded, addictive relationship with, you are going to be in physical pain. Emotional pain, mental pain, but also physical pain. And that is what keeps bringing people back to their relationships often because that pain can feel like this just means that I can't live without them. But often what that means is that this person is related to something else that's deeper that they become the surrogate re surrogate replacement for and so the distance and time you have away from them subconsciously consciously for some of us but subconsciously reminds you of that pain and your body and your mind and your spirit can't go through with it and so by you staying away for 30 to 90 days it gives your body and your system a chance to reset and to and to learn how to self-soothe and find other ways to comfort you that don't have anything to do with this relationship part of detoxing by the way also means that you don't replace it with somebody else it means that you don't break up or tell your partner hey i just need 30 to 60 days just for me to focus on me i love you so much but i just i need i need to have this clarity so that i know how to make this relationship better, how to make me better, whatever your word choice may be. So you don't put that relationship on pause and then suddenly start to get closer with your homeboy who you've always, nothing has ever really happened, but you, you kind of have like something, right? There's like a certain kind of chemistry there. You're replacing that same emotional companionship and connectivity that you have with your, your partner or your ex, whatever the title is, and you're still getting that male affirmation and attention there, or female, depending on who you're attracted to and what your relationship statuses are. This is a complete single detox from all romantic relationships, all of those situationships, all of those hey big head texts, all of those people who like you're just, again, just quote unquote friends with, but not really. 
and see what happens. Some of you might be even shaking and scratching your neck right now. Like, like that, that is like painful for you. If that is painful for you, if the idea of you going without male or female romantic sexual affirmation is painful for you because you will not know who you are, because you don't know how to comfort yourself, that you don't know how to have fun. Those things are your every. It consumes so much of your life that that's your everything. I think that should give you pause. I think that should give you pause to why do these things matter that much to me to where just the idea of this woman talking about it on this podcast it invokes a little bit of pain. I want you to consider that, okay? Now, if you're still with me here, I want to invite you to a webinar that I'm giving. It's a new one that I haven't talked about before. It's not the main one. So depending on when you listen to this, this may or may not be um, available. But this webinar is titled, How to Heal from Low Self-Worth and Stop Repeating Unhealthy Relationships the four-step roadmap to get the relationships that you want this year. A little bit of a spoiler, the first step of the roadmap is this detox. And ladies, you know, I was telling someone else um, this through Instagram DM um, today, actually. I was saying how I'm so grateful for Black Girls Healing and having this platform because I want to make sure that women stop suffering needlessly with these issues. And I want you to be one of those women who breaks the cycle, breaks the curse. Where we're not talking about this and if this, relate, if this episode hit home for you this, right now, that on July 2nd next year, it won't hit as home as it is right now. Right, that there, there will be some movement, that there will be some healing that would have happened. Um, that's what I want for you. And so um, this is a live class, it's not a recording. I will be there talking y'all through this, answering your questions um, on Tuesday, July 9th at 7 p.m. CST, Central Standard Time. Um, if you would like to attend, I want you to register by going to blackgirlsheal.org slash masterclass. If you have a friend who needs this information, get her to register as well. I will not be sending replays. Um, there will be no recordings after this um, for those who do not attend and those who do not register. Um, those who do attend live, there will be some special things available just for you not for anyone who did not attend, just for the replay, um, and signed up just for the replay. Sorry about that, but also not sorry because I want you to attend. Um, but yeah, so blackgirlsheal.org slash masterclass. Send him or her, you know, like equal opportunity. I want everyone to get this healing. Um, but send your friend this podcast episode if you think they need to he hear it. Um, and I want you to join me on Tuesday in a week from now. In case you hear this episode at a later date, um, how about you go to blackgirlsheal.org slash masterclass, no, slash roadmap, and there will be resources for you there. Um, you can still go to blackgirlsheal.org slash masterclass after July 9th. 2019 because we always have um, certain classes and webinars offered on different topics to help you with your healing so you can still go there but um, if you go to blackgirlsheal.org slash mass slash roadmap I'm sorry um, then I will have something there for those of you who just missed this um, just because of timing so um, but still want to move forward and learn about these, these steps. So that is it for this episode. Ladies, I want you to be clear in the second half of the year or the beginning of the year or the next three-fourths of the year if you're listening to this episode on March 14th, 2020. 
I don't know what, what your story is, but you're listening to this at the right time. Um, this is a divine moment, and I want you to grasp it. So if you have any questions about this episode, you can join me at um, the Black Girls Heal Facebook group. Um, the link is in the show notes. You can also go to blackgirlsheal.org slash group. Um, and you'll be automatically taken there for you to join. And the best way to get in touch with me as well is also to join me on Instagram at blackgirlsheal underscore. Um, and continue the conversation there and let me know. And if you are enjoying this podcast, if you like the episodes, if you want people to know about it, I want you to share this on Instagram specifically, like totally do it on Facebook. But the majority of people who, um, I'm not gonna give ages cause you know, I've had women who are in their sixties who have been a part of our programs, who have loved it. And I have women who are freshmen in college who have been a part of our program and love it. So I'm not gonna characterize it that way. But Instagram, I feel like is the place that a lot of our students hang out so I would love if you took a screenshot of the episodes um, that really stand out to you, tag Black Girls Heal so that I know that you're sharing it and I can shout you out as well. Um, but let, let's have more women get um, access to this healing. So that is it for today. I hope you have a wonderful week. Have some good barbecue this weekend if you're going to celebrate um and i love you all so much bye